The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akia Bayomi, says that COVID-19 cases are likely to peak in the month of August. He said this during the press briefing at the press center in Alausa Secretariat in Ikeja, the state capital. The state has been the epicenter of Nigeria since the index case on February 28. Joining us now is Dr. Tunde Balugu, a public health analyst and researcher. Thank you very much for joining us. What do you say about the comment credited to the Commissioner um, for Health in Lagos that we're going to pick next month? Good morning. Good morning. I think it's, um, it's heartwarming. Um, it's encouraging that um, the commissioner could say that um, and so we could receive it with a cautious optimism because uh, the, the desire of everyone is to ensure that uh, we can overcome COVID 19 pandemic in Lagos. So it's, it's, it's good. And I hope that that can be achieved. However, I have certain concerns um, because. Um, over the last one week, we noticed, um, there's a, we observed that Lagos state cases have dropped below 100 at a time a day. Um, and, but afterwards, we noticed a spike. We are now having, like I said, Lagos had over 200. So, trying to marry the two, um, it's awkward. In addition, um, if they are, Lagos State currently tests 1,000 patients per day. So you have 1,000 cases or 1,000 tests being conducted daily. And if Lagos wants to increase the capacity to about 4,000, according to what the Commissioner said yesterday, then um, it's expected that the number of cases will increase. So, trying to marry increasing test capacity, and they're still expecting that we'll pick in August. Uh, it's that awkward to need um, the Lagos State Commissioner, um, Professor Bauer, to clarify that angle and assure that. So, so if I get, if I get you correctly, you you are that. expressing uh, skepticism um, as per the country peak, uh, the state rather uh, peaking with coronavirus cases come August. Yes, yeah, so th that's just because according to the Commissioner, he says that with one test, one case confirmed, you are likely to have 10, I mean, nine other people who are out there who are yet to be tested. And that's what I'm um, catered to him. So in other words, Nigeria has about over a little over 14,000 cases as we speak, but it's estimated that we actually have around 140,000. So if you are increasing the test capacity, it's obvious that you're also going to uh, pick many more um, um, cases. But if you visit the website of NCBC, what you find there is that they will see number of cases lab confirmed. So essentially that means that they themselves, they, they have, they are aware that there are other people who are out there who are yet to be tested uh, and they are um, COVID-19 carriers. Okay, so now that we seem to be making some sort of headway in managing the situation, is it time for, you know, a little bit of relaxation of further lockdowns? Or um, is it time for us to be a little extra vigilant? So um, we, we just have to be extra vigilant. We can't let down our guard. Uh, as we have noticed, um, every case confirmed. There are nine orders yet to be confirmed. That's what um, the resources is telling us. So um, the implication is that we just have to remain vigilant. Uh, it's it's worrisome that certain sectors are the ones who are bearing the, the brunt of this violence, but it's for our collective good. All right, uh, let me ask you, what is your assessment of the evolution of our response to this pandemic uh, since it began? Um, are we learning and growing and getting better? Or are you worried that we are not um, doing as much as we should? Well, uh, in the last the part is that the COVID-19 was a novel, novel case and um, it, it caught up on our ways. So, but I think over time, every stakeholder has evolved and is approached to managing um, the situation. So you now have um, 
medical practitioner as well, we have trained and equipped. We have more facilities installed, preventive. The PPEs are now more easily accessible. There are more advocacies coming from the government and other regulatory body for people who adhere to COVID 19 guidelines. COVID 19 guidelines themselves are even clearer. So, I mean, there, there are some positive things that are observed. Um, we even uh, in the private sector, we also see that the organizations have um, embraced social distancing. Their employees are working from home. Um, many on, on their own also do not go out, don't venture out. Social gathering, um, social events are, are redefined. So I, I think we are learning. We can do more, but um, obviously we are learning. And I think we should uh, commend um, Nigeria and Nigerians. The, the skepticism that has been um, announced that a lot of persons, even now, I spoke to a couple of um, health practitioners who have uh, confirmed that they still um, meet people who express doubt that we have COVID-19 even. Uh, have you met any uh, such people? And what do you say to those who are still skeptic, even now? <sighs> So, it, it, I mean, um, there's no way we're not going to find people who remain um, doubters of COVID 19 presence in Nigeria or even the figures from the NCBC. So, but what we'll just continue to do is to educate, enlighten, and advocate so that we can understand better what COVID 19 is all about. And the fact that the number of cases are increasing, so somehow because the concern initially was that I don't know anybody around me who has COVID-19, but with more confirmed cases, you somehow likely you come across one or two persons that you know personally who has it, or who knows somebody who knows someone personally who has COVID-19. So um, just, but I earlier recommended that if we could increase our advocacy in local dialects in languages and in ways that people could um, relate with. I think it will obviously be better. It will spread the message faster, and then um, we'll get more cooperation from the people. Uh, one more before I let you go. Um, the people in the front line, including yourself and other doctors, have had really um, valid concerns over the course of the uh, efforts to contain this virus. What would you, um, you know, how would, what would be your assessment of the response of government to health practitioners and the concerns that they've expressed in the past months, even with those that even at this point are taking on strike as an alternative um, to getting the needed attention? Well, it's unfortunate that um, industrial action took place uh, recently uh, among, I mean, that helped people, particularly from the proposed. Uh, it's important that governments take, all governments take uh, doctors seriously and they are the first ones. Indeed, all health workers give them their welfare very seriously and take good care of them, equip them with the resources to deliver the goods. Um, so where you find doctors more is at the creative end. But we also need doctors to play a role in preventing uh, measures, communicating to the people, maybe public health experts, let them engage them, let them go into the community, um, let them also engage all those uh, town criers at the local level, work with them, um, the chiefs and the kings at the local level propagate because we need prevention more than cure. You know, I did actually say prevention is better than cure. So, but the, at, at the curative level, let the doctors also be well uh, remunerated, well taken care of, and I think it will all end in place. All right, uh, Dr. Balogu, thank you very much for your time and the insights you've provided on this conversation. You're welcome.